Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. In this video, we'll look at a question that was raised on the Enterprise DNA forum. Martha has transactional data and wants to remove rows that cancel each other out. There are two distinct transactional types, one for incoming and one for outgoing goods. She's added a movement count and based on that, formulated three scenarios. Scenario one is based on two rows. If they cancel each other out, both rows should be removed. If that's not the case, then both rows should be kept. Scenario 2 and 3 are based on a combination of rows, in part cancelling each other out. Those rows should be removed on a first-in, first-out basis, so that only the latest incoming transactions are kept. Basically, we're repeating the same logic over and over again. We should be able to design a single approach to fit all these scenarios. Some of the things we're going to do is add a column with absolute quantities, group by, add a quantity balance column, and a nested table using the all rows option. Transform those nested tables, sort on movement type and date, create a running total, and only keep rows based on a condition. Now I've rated this intermediate level because most of the transformations we can do using the user interface. With that said, Let's go over the Power Query. We'll start by adding a column with absolute quantities. Select the Quantity column. On the Add Column tab, select Scientific and Absolute Value. I'm going to rename that column name in the formula bar. We can now group by ID index and absolute quantity. Select ID index, hold down Shift or Control, and select absolute quantity. On the Transform tab, you'll find Group by, but also on the Home tab, Group by. Now we're going to add a new column, and it's not going to be a count, but it's going to be the sum of the quantity. So let's rename that Quantity Balance. It's going to be a sum of the quantity column. We'll add another aggregation, but that's going to be a special one. Select all rows. Let's also give this column a name. And press OK. If we click off to the side in the white space, we see a preview of the nested table down below. We see that the quantities for this nested table cancel each other out, and the quantity balance is zero. If we look at the next nested table, so click off to the side in the white space, we see that the quantity column doesn't cancel each other out, and the quantity balance is greater than zero. Let's add a custom column so we can use that for our nested table transformations later on. So select Add Custom Column. I'll rename that column to Transformations. and we'll add a zero as a placeholder. Press OK. We're now ready to create the logic for transforming those nested tables, but we don't want to write a bunch of M. And we don't need to. We can use the user interface for the most part if we build the logic for those transformations in a separate query. The most elaborate scenario that we had was the one with either three or four rows. Now, if I click off to the side in the last row, I see that this table has four rows. So we can use this to build our transformations. Right click off to the side in the white space and select add as new query. We see that the nested table is now expanded and has been added as a new query. And we can use this to build the logic that we need. Now first thing we need to do is sort on movement type. We'll sort on movement type descending. So the outgoing transactions will always be on the top. Next we'll sort the posting date ascending. Making sure that if we omit rows, it will always be done according to the FIFO principle. To identify the rows that we're going to remove, I'm going to add a running total to this table. 
and we can use list.firstn for that task. So let's examine what list.firstn does. This function creates a list based on another list, where the top items are kept based on a specific number or on a criteria. Let's step back to our design query. For list.firstn we need two things. First we need that list, and that list is our quantity column. Now if I right click my quantity column header, I get the option to add as new query. And here we see the code that we need to generate that list. In the applied steps pane, you can see that it points to the last step and then identifies the column in those square brackets. Let's step back to our design query again. Now the second part that we need for list.first n is a number to identify how many numbers to keep from that list. And we can use the index for that. So I'm going to add an index column from 1. For this row, we'll only keep this item. For the second row, we'll keep the top 2. And for the third row, we'll keep the top 3. And we can now sum that up. So let's add a custom column. Let's call this running total. So we use list.firstn. And the first parameter was that list, so the quantity column. Now we need to point to the last step, and the last step is now the added index. And next we identify the column that we want, and that is our quantity column. Our count is in the index column. And press OK. So list.firstn now returns a list. And if we click off to the side in the white space, we can see the contents of that list. So for the first record, it only kept the top row from that list. For the second record, it kept the top two rows. Excellent! Now all we need to do is sum up these quantities, and we can use list.sum to do that. So I'm going to add that in the formula bar. And I'm also going to declare type. With this running total, we can identify the rows that we want to keep. We only want to keep rows that are greater than zero. So let's add a filter condition. We can now remove our helper columns. Select index and running total. Remove columns. I'm going to rename my previous steps. In the advanced editor, we can now copy the code that we've created. So I'll open the advanced editor. And this is our split step. So we can select everything below that. I'm going to copy this with Ctrl C and press Done. Now let's move back to our original query. Again, open the advanced editor. And instead of the placeholder, let's move to a new line. I'm going to use the let expression because that can capture values from intermediate calculations in a variable. So let go to a new line and paste in my transformations. I'm just going to align them real quick. and also declare type. This points to our expanded nested table. Our nested tables are placed within the all rows column. So I'm going to point to that.
and press OK. So our transformations column now has nested tables. And let's check the content. Build our query based on the last row, right? And that contained four rows when we started and only contained two once we're done. Looking good. We also have those quantity balance zero, right? So when I click off to the side in the white space, we can see that we have an empty table. We can remove those by filtering on the quantity balance column. So we don't want quantity balance equal to zero. Now I'm going to select my transformation column and remove other columns. I can now expand my transformation nested tables. Don't use the original column name as a prefix and press OK. On the transform tab, select data type. And we're all done. So in this video, we've seen how to clean up transactional data. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel. Thank you so much for watching and all the best.